Picking up from the last video, there were many nice suggestions in the YouTube comments, so thanks everybody for those in the discussion there. Uh, based on some suggestions there, I have made changes uh, to my design, and I've also finished the connections for my DDR, or at least the first pass through that, and that would include termination and voltage regulation for that. On this oh, architectural high-level block diagram on the left, I've continued to kind of build that out or clean that up as I go, and I'll continue to work on that. You know, it's not something that I have done before getting into the design, but I'm trying to just capture what are the major blocks as I go, and, and I'll continue to add to that. Anything in yellow is something that maybe I've changed in this or since the last video and things that I might talk through here briefly in this video. I did also put a little more clarification in this diagram just on how I bring up the power rails. So I bring in my 5 volt. I'm assuming I'm bringing in a 5 volt regulated either from a DC barrel connector or a USB connection. Uh, then I'm going to bring up my 1.0 rail, 1.8, 1.35. And then once that's up and running, I can bring up my 3.3. And this new one, this is 0 0.675 volt that has to do with my DDR. Now this is highlighted yellow because it's something that changed since the last video. Same with the memory up here. And then I've changed things around uh, as far as the SD card. I'll talk about that and these LED indicators and a JTAG connector. So those are all changes since the last video. But maybe I'll start out with these first couple. I have this uh, power indicator that I'm using for each of the rails. It's just basically an LED and I had a transistor and was driving it off of the output of these regulators. And, and the suggestion was, well, that's probably not good because you might have a poor output. And all of a sudden I'm showing an LED saying that I've got that rail running when maybe it's not running well uh, or what it needs to be. So instead I'm going to go off of the power good output of these regulators to then drive and instead of a transistor, drive a MOSFET. Uh, so if I flip over to the schematic, I have my regulator sheet, and here's where I set up my 1.0 rail, 1.8, 1.35, and the 3.3. That's what I had before. But I added a quick net label to all of the power good signals. So power good 1.0 is just saying that this is running and the, the power level, the voltage levels look right. Uh, then the same for the 1.8. I've got a 1.8 power good, a 1.35, and a 3.3. So then I came up to my power indicators and I made a couple changes here. Uh, first of all, I took out the transistors, replaced them with MOSFETs. And instead of just using the output of the rail as what would turn on that MOSFET, I've changed it to use the power good signal. So there, the power good 1.0 will turn this on so that this LED lights up. So I changed out transistors to MOSFETs. I used the power good signals wherever they were available, uh, which would be these, these here that you see these for 10, 135, 18, and the 33. Uh, you're also going to notice I have a new one here that is a 0 0.675. That regulator does not have a power good, so I am just using the output of it uh, as far as the main voltage to, to do the same type of thing here. I also changed, previously I had these to use the 3.3 volt on these indicators, but then as I was thinking about it, uh, that 3.3 might not even get to the point where it's working right, so it's kind of hard to drive the output indicator for the 1.0 if I didn't even get to that point on the the rail uh, uh, bring up. So I did change that to the 5 volt, knowing that I've always got this 5 volt coming into the system. and. Uh, so basically I can fire up the 1.0 and that 1.0 does not need the 3.3 rail to light up. So that was an oversight previously. So I think this 5 volt coming into these indicators is good. MOSFETs is good. Using the power good signal is, is also a, a much better approach than what I had before. So that was the change I made for that. If I jump back here for a minute then the next thing I mentioned on here is I changed my JTAG connector from this HS2 to an HS3 and I have this on my sheet called program uh, but previously I was using it's a Digilent JTAG HS2 type of programmer and I had set up the header to use that 
I've now changed that to go with the HS3 based on a comment that uh, some debugging does potentially require this reset line and the HS3 uh, for this specific sock that I'm using, this uh, Zinc 7000 is, is nice to have uh, or could be useful. So I took out the a single smaller row of connectors for the HS2 connector put in the HS3 connector. Uh, so basically I just made up this component. It's just a two by seven pin header and I'm bringing in the same TDI, TDO, TCK, TMS, but then I added in this reset active low line coming off of the, the processing system and then a same VCC and a whole bunch of ground pins. Uh, so that was a change there. And then I also did pull out, uh, I just have a placeholder in here. This is not connected and in some future video, I'll have to figure out how do I actually interface with an SD card, but I have a sheet for that. And all I have in here is just the component for the actual SD card, you know, holder, the slot, basically. The one I had in here was a full size and I, I took that out and put in a micro. So this is a micro SD uh, basically slot instead of the full-sized SD card, which is great because it frees up a whole bunch of space on the board. So that was a, a nice idea. And then I completed my DDR connections. And if I look at that, a couple of things, maybe I'll start with the regulators. I did add this bus termination voltage or VTT. And this is using the same basically part that Phil is using in his course that I'm going through that advanced digital hardware design off of FedEvil, you know, and I'm, I'm really building my design off of uh, what he's teaching in that, in that course. And this is the one that he used for the bus termination voltage. And so really I need to get out, uh, you know, a half of the 1.35 volt. And so that is my 0 0.675. And then there's also a reference. Uh, so there's two, two of these that are coming out of that. But anyways, this is the part I'm using to get me my 0 0.675 and then also to produce this uh, 0 0.675 underscore ref. And this voltage will get used with my termination. So if I go over to my <clears throat> DDR sheet here, uh, you can see I've connected up the rest of these two memory chips to the processing system here of the zinc. And previously in the last video, I think I had the address lines and the data lines. So the same address lines go to both of those chips. Then I have the lowest 16 bits of the data going to one, the highest 16 bits going to the other. There's the rest of some common signals that between both of these chips that I connected. So these uh, BA012, uh, all this reset, write enable, chip select, etc., clocking type of information, etc. So that all is connected up. And then there are some signals that are unique per chip and I've connected those up uh, accordingly. So I've come over here and said, okay, I've got this uh, DM uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And that I think is a, a mask type of control, but that is uh, configured over here to go 0, 1, and then 2, 3 across those two chips. And then I also have uh, this uh, DQS, these signals, and uh, these are differential pairs, but I have those uh, then connected over here to these signals that you see here, LDQS, the positive negative, the UDQS, positive negative. And you can see I'm using 0, 1, 2, and 3. So as I was following through uh, Phil's video, uh, when he's walking through on that course I'm taking and setting this up on his uh, ZetBrett, he calls it. On that project, this is kind of how he set that up, and I'm following that um, generally. Um, he, he later does some stuff in the routing where he changes orders of some of these pins around, um, but I have not gotten to the routing yet, so some of this may change as I get further down the road. But that's what I have so far, and so I'm going from the processing system itself and then bringing all those signals over to these two data chips. For now, I'm continuing to just reference this Micron part and uh, in time, I think uh, I might you know, use a different part than that. Uh, if I understand it correctly, the form factor, the footprint of these uh, DDR chips should be standardized. 
Uh, I believe the pinout should be standardized so that I can just grab a different vendor, for example, make sure that it's internally the same structure that I need, but then be able to find a less expensive part. So there was a recommendation earlier uh, that there are some parts that were maybe half the price or less of, of what I'm using here. So maybe I'll swap those out at some point, uh, but hopefully I don't have to actually change my schematic or, or the actual routing if uh, once I hopefully get that far. With this then, I also have uh, these terminations in here. So this is really the termination required for this DDR. And I believe I have that on all of the appropriate signals. Um, maybe a quick note, some of these uh, signals are differential pairs. And I've just been starting to put this little graphic here just to remind me later that uh, those are differential. And I need to take that into account when I route those signals. But I do have all of these terminations, uh, and that's going to this uh, 0 0.675 volt. And that again, back up on my regulators, was this VTT block that I put in here. And so I have all of those going to that. And uh, again, that was following, um, I think, the example that uh, Phil was showing and how he talked through it in his course. So hopefully I have that correct at this point. And then there's some more uh, bypass capacitors for the, the DDR termination. So I've added those down here. Uh, so I've got the connections completed. I've got the termination in there. And then I have, again, this voltage regulator back over here to get me my, my VTT. So I think that should be pretty close. Uh, again, I'll have to double check this and this may change as I do the actual routing and layout on the PCB side of things, but this is what I've got for now. Um, so for this first pass, I'm gonna consider this complete and then I'll adjust it as I try to double check the design later as I go through that. Now, if I open up the PCB, let me just see if I've made any updates, but I'll get the PCB opened up here. And looks like I did have some updates there, uh, but this is the mess that I have right now. And again, I'm just trying to lay stuff out to kind of get a feel for how busy is this going to be and what kind of routing challenges am I going to, I'm going to have. And I'm trying to stick to this 100 millimeter squared board uh, just for cost. I want to try to do an eight layer board if I can pull that off. But again, here's my zinc. Here are those two memory chips. I've got a whole bunch of just capacitors for those that I'll have to, of course, get to put in a better place as I get to routing this. I've got all my termination. I've got the termination capacitors that go with that. All of that stuff I just dropped here. So it's generally in the right area, but I know all of that will have to get moved appropriately. And then you can see that I, I shrunk that SD card slot down, which is great. Uh, here is that new regulator for the 0 0.675 uh, VTT. And other than that, I think this is, oh, and then the JTAG, you know, is now this uh, two by seven instead of the single row pin header that it was before uh, to support this uh, HS3 that uh, Digilent has for that programmer. But this is just starting to show me, you know, how busy this is going to be. I, I'm using for now. I'm just using 0603s for all of these capacitors, resistors, etc. That's probably going to change. All the smaller valued items that I can do, maybe with uh, 0402, I'm probably going to go to that, uh, just because there's going to be a lot here. I'll see when I get into the routing. But I, I imagine these are actually going to get shrunk down to a 0402. And, uh, and again, I'm going to do some testing if I can use 0201s or if that's just simply too small. I think underneath a couple of these chips, especially the, the zinc itself, I'm probably going to have some 0201s that I'll, I'll test. I mentioned this in the last video. As I get a little bit closer to the schematic being done, or at least a first pass through all the components, I might order up a blank board that's just a four layer board and just test all my power setup and make sure that that seems like it's working okay. 
Uh, and as part of that, I'll do some testing of this soldering of these tiny little components and see if I can manage that or not. But this is the general layout I'm looking at so far. And as I get into routing, I'm sure this is going to change. You know, if I come in and look at my memory, I need to do this a flyby routing where I, I basically take the addressing from one to another and then move on to the next and then on to the termination. Uh, and same with some of those control signals. So that might uh, definitely cause me to move these around in a way that makes more sense. For now, I just place them towards this side of this as far, far as that's where most of these signals are coming from is, is right here. And like this here, my uh, FT2232, you know, those signals are coming here. So maybe I want to at some point move this up or closer or move it right maybe up here. Um, all of that type of movement I'll, I'll start worrying about when I get into the actual routing of the board. This is just showing me how busy this is getting and how much of a challenge I'm going to have to get through the routing side of it. There may also be other components that I swap out as I get to that stage, like these uh, reset program uh, active low switches or buttons. I'll probably find smaller buttons as an example. Maybe some of these pin headers that I have for selecting things, I might go with, uh, I don't know, maybe smaller pin headers. We'll see. But that's where I'm at at this point. And I think next up, I'm going to work on the Ethernet side of things. And then I need to come back to this uh, USB 3320. And I think Phil has that in his course I'm going through. Uh, so those are covered. And then I'll get into this HDMI. And uh, that I don't believe Phil has in his design. I'll have to double check that. Um, so that's some other research I'll have to do. Same with the SD card. I'll have to research that. Find some reference designs maybe for probably the Digilent one for sure would have the HDMI. And I'm trying to recall if it has an SD card connection or not. But those would be things I need to work on uh, next. And then I'm going to have to verify which components I am going to really select for some of these things. Uh, for example, anything that might require a slightly different footprint. I want to validate I've got the right sizes of things, whether it's oh, inductors or uh, maybe the ferrite beads, things like that. And then I know I've got some more steps just to validate and uh, validate my schematic and then I'll start working on routing. So I'm probably a few weeks away from getting into routing and I know that's going to take me a long time, maybe a couple of months to try to get through that routing in a good way. We'll see. See how that comes along. That's where I'm going to stop for now. Again, next time I think I'm going to come back with the Ethernet connection and see if I can get that all connected up.